So I came across this video the other day by Wes who took us through this one website called as Mac Mastercard which has like a lot of path on their website for different different things and he covers a lot of interesting things about how this website is extremely fast right. It all started with this one particular tweet where Kenneth showed that how this website is extremely responsive in terms of like every click just works right everything just starts working without any loaders or anything and Wes shows us that how it is possible to extract out all this performance right. So in this video, what I want to do is cover a couple of things which Wes has already talked about, but in general, review the Next.js clone of the same application, which is Nextmaster, because why not? Versal took this opportunity and created this one website, which has over a million products. It has a search bar and it has all these products. I mean, not the whole million stack over here, but million products inside database, right? And this works as fast as, you know, McMaster. I think this is even faster, right? So you would not feel a difference on, you know, if this is an app, it's, if this is an offline app or an online app and how all of this works, right? And this video is great in terms of like all the pointers and tips are dis which are discussed. And if you're interested in this, I would recommend you to watch this video as well. I'll leave a link in the description. But what I want to cover is a few dark sides as well of doing all these performance optimizations and everything, which people don't usually talk about. So let's take a look at Nextmaster, not Macmaster, because Macmaster is covered already by Wes. So Nextmaster is sweet. It came into existence by this tweet so if i go back a little you can see ethan who works at he doesn't work at was i thought that this is an official versal project okay so it's not exactly a versal project it's something where versal helped the other guys i'm assuming but anyway this is equally impressive i think this is probably more impressive because i i personally feel that this website is faster than the original website so let's take a look at how this one works right let us refresh this and see like what's happening the network tab is going crazy right it already downloaded six megabytes of data Data, whereas this original page was just 60 kilobytes, right? So what's going on here? What's happening? You see that all of these pages, all of these fetch requests which happened, they are for something drawing techniques, architecture tools. So I'm assuming like all of them are like these books and all or these items which are available, right? This drawing techniques and sections is there. So you see this is underscore RSC. So this means that this is likely a React server component. And if you look at the response, you get something like this. Now what's happening over here is that this is a response from React running on server right the traditional model the traditional architecture always has been that when you are building a Next.js app I'm talking about from the time you know it's getting serious when you have to fire up a TL draw so anyway there are basically two things one is an app.js router app router which I am just saying is RSC okay you can of course run app router in non RSC mode also but I'll just keep it simple and second is page router which is like SSG SSR you know something like this so what happens in these two what is the difference exactly is that you see RSC has things like this where you have payload like this where you are you know trying to get data from the server now this payload doesn't mean anything at all except to the react to the JavaScript which is parsing this right because it has to parse this into an actual react component and it has to create component on the screen for you now mind you that this might look garbage but this is pretty much like how JSON also looks like right so JSON is one way to you know send information from server to client this is a custom serialization format right so this is a custom serialization format used by react.js on rscs right so if you're writing a react server component which renders this component on server and sends the data to client this is what the react server actually sends as a raw data right now there is obviously some javascript which is required to parse this but the idea on which rsc believes is that that javascript is far less than what would have been the case in case if you want to run this on the client itself and in some cases it might not be even possible because this React server component for constructing this maybe in the background maybe it's actually doing a database call so let's say there is a database over here right so this is a database which is used by the application which is your backend server and then this server generates this specific thing and it sends to the front end and then front end renders this as a component right now what's happening over here is that let's say just to give you a very quick example in order to understand why do we need this at all let's take a very simple example of a library like day.js right so day.js what it does it that allows you to format dates into different things for example let's say your date is stored in ISO format right ISO string format which is like 2024 something 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 right and you want to show this last edited four months ago or something like that right the dates might be off but you get the idea so how do you get this this from this right you would do something like day.js pass in your date dot format on you know from now something like this which is like the day.js syntax to getting this four months ago 
ghost string. Now, when you want to do something like this, what you have to do is that you have to call day.js as a library, right? Now, if you are shipping this on the client as a component, if you are shipping this on the client, you need day.js on the client also. However, if you are running that component on the server itself, what you can do is you can technically generate this string on the server itself, right? And the server would finally respond with the last edit four months ago as a, as a whole constructed thing. And your client never gets to download day.js library or it never needs it as well as a dependency also. So this is like one of the advantages, one of the big advantages of using React server components. In general, among other things, sure, like this is also like a streamable format. So you can see like it's not exactly JSON because JSON can't be streamed. You can see every one, every single one of these lines can be streamed as a different, different thing. So server can prepare the response as it's calling the database and doing all of those things. So streaming is supported, all of that is supported. But the core idea is that you are rendering the things before the user request, right? You can see like we have already performed 1800 requests and I've just changed probably, I've just crawled a bit, right? I've not even done anything. So if I refresh this page again and let's just take a look at the fetch request, right? So it's already like 257 and let me just keep scrolling it, you know, all the way to down, all the way to the very end. And you can see like we are well over 1500 requests already. You keep an eye over here. You can see like we are now hitting 1800 also. We have crossed 1800 and if I keep on hovering over these things, you can see, you know, as a user, I'm not doing anything. I'm not using this platform at all, right? I'm just checking out, oh, okay, what, what all is there? There are a few links, there are a few products, there are a few things here and there. What else? What do I want to check out? Everything. Let me just go ahead and, you know, maybe hover over these two things also. So you see in net, I have, all I'm doing is just hovering, right? And the count is 6,535 requests and I've downloaded 60 megabytes of data already, right? Now, the thing with this is that now if I open any page on this website, it will be instant, right? See, it opened. Now, if I go back, I come back to the same page. And if I click on this, this also works. I can go back. So the end user experience is great because we have done all these optimizations. And the biggest one out of them is prefetching the next page, right? You can do all the optimizations in the world, but nothing beats this where you are able to prefetch the next page. And I have just visited three pages so far, which are very, very light relatively. If you go to doc, you will see a single page is just six, around 60, 70 KB. So not a lot of data, but I've already transferred 73, I mean, 73 megabytes of resources. I've just transferred eight megabytes. So, you know, the compression and everything is taken care, but you have downloaded effectively 73 megabytes. The only problem with this approach is two things, which we'll discuss. So let me just clarify the pages router thing also, because I think we left it in the middle. So what do you see over here, which Vercel has implemented is the app router thing, right? Now let's head over to Fermion. So Fermion is a platform which is built by us for creating courses and creating these high performance websites, right? So if you're running a technical course, or if you want to start a business online where you're selling courses and stuff, and you want a full featured platform, which includes student analytics, all of that, that is where you use Formion, right? And Formion also uses Versal for hosting its backend, right? Hosting its front ends backend, right? That makes sense. So if I refresh this page now, what you're going to see is that Formion does not use React Server components, right? So if I hover over these links, okay, so these are not links. Let's find some links. Okay. So you can see over here, if I click on the privacy policy link. So I mean, even better, instead of like privacy policy, let's just jump to blogs because that would be easier to show you like how the prefetching is working in case of blogs. So you can see once I load this page, there are six requests which happens and you can see that this request is going to a specific URL, right? How to create course bundles, which are the links of these blogs. And the more I hover over these, the more the number of requests are increasing, right? So what's going on? What's happening over here? So what's happening is that whenever I hover over this, Next.js, what it does, it prefetches the content in form of JSON. On. And this over here is similar to what you saw on the other side as well, which is the RSC side, right? So you see that this is a React server component format. This is a JSON format, which is like, you know, something which pages are out of support and Versal used to recommend a lot. Now they don't recommend it because I'll tell you the reasons also. But this is a format which we use heavily on CodeDamp and Fermion. So what's happening over here is that you get the full props, the full response in one go. So this obviously cannot be streamed right? So this is not a streamable response. Second thing is that the serialization of JSON is slightly limited compared to the serialization format used here, right? So JSON cannot represent certain things which this format can represent, right? So that depends on like how, what sort of data you want to pass and all, but JSON cannot represent everything which React server components can do. But apart from that, the basic core idea is same, that the server generates props for a component. Then not only do you have to load those components, but you also have to load, you know, a certain JavaScript file, which needs to understand how to consume these props, right? Basically the script for that specific page, which no
knows like how to consume the actual JavaScript for the page, right? So that is there. And once you have all of that, you click on this and you can see the navigation in instant basically. So if I click on this, it navigates similarly how you would click on something like this and you see. So there is no real difference as such between these two things once the thing is preloaded. Now the problem with both the approaches, which I wanted to talk a little bit about, is that you are consuming a lot of data, right? So over here also, even in our case, for example, we request a lot of pages already before they are, you know, before somebody wants to use them. You can see like even Next.js pages router is more aggressive, right? So it's loading it fresh on every single hover, right? This is how Next.js works by default. You can disable it if you want. We haven't disabled it right now. We can disable it if the cost increases a lot. So that's the number one thing that you're wasting a lot of user data and the user number of user requests. The second problem is that if I show you something like this, for example, if let's say if I empty cache and hard reload, this, let's say all of these pages are, if I scroll down and let's say all of these pages are getting loaded, you see all these pending requests which are happening. Now, the thing is that browser can make only so many requests parallelly. So all of you can see like the requests keep on going, 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 going. If I am about to click on a link which is not prefetched already and which is not getting fetched also, which can be like depending on like how you have created your website, you will suffer from a problem where your browser will actually wait for those requests which are, you know, just continuously happening for them to finish than, you know, just firing your request right away. Let's try this out. Let's see if I can reproduce that. So if I refresh this with cache disabled, it should ideally start fetching all the requests again, right? So let's take a look. Okay, so we haven't even gotten images downloaded yet. A lot of images already. So we haven't started with the fetch request all also. I'm not sure like how, so you can see that we have started to load React Server components. And if I scroll down a bit and if I start to click on this, see nothing is happening now. So nothing is happening at all. When I click on this specific link, you see that after a long time, it opened this link, right? And there is no response from the browser also. There is no indicator that the page is navigating away. So as a user, I'm just confused at this point. I'm literally like clicking this link as I'm speaking because I'm on 3G connection, nothing is happening. So this is one of the problems with this approach where, you know, if you're aggressively loading so much request, individual things, your browser will just not load what the user is doing, right? Otherwise, if you would load something like this, for example, if I give you another example, if I disable JavaScript on this page, refresh this now, because these pages are statically built, I'm still on 3G, the cache is still disabled. But now because JavaScript is disabled, the prefetching would not happen, right? So let's wait for the page to at least load first. When the prefetching does not happen, when I hover, there is no thunder of requests, right? So your browser ideally should get a little bit more time for, you know, honoring the click of the user. So see, when I clicked on this, the browser immediately started navigating. So there is immediate feedback to the user also that the navigation is starting. When I click on this, immediate navigation, even though I'm on 3G plan, right, which is a very, very slow speed. So these sort of technologies, these sort of things work great, both of them, like it's not just RSC and SSG SSR, work great if you are not, first of all, bombarding the panel with requests, which in this case is clearly happening. And second thing, the second problem, which is more of a platform problem, you know, not a ReactJS or a technology problem, is the pricing. So let's take a look at a provider like Versal, for example. And if you take a look at the Versal's Pro plan, which is something we have already discussed before, take a look at this Edge request and Edge middleware, right? So what Edge request says is that it's 10 million a month included and then starts at $2 per million request, right? So remember in the starting of the video, I showed you like we have already crossed like 10,000 or something requests, right? Maybe we can still do it if I enable JavaScript again, get it a refresh. And if I start to scroll this, you're going to see that we have already crossed a thousand requests. And if I keep on hovering, I don't remember exactly. Uh, yeah, we were on this homepage itself, right? So you can see like it's, it's bombarding with the number of requests. Not sure like why it's canceling half of them though. Anyway, so you can see these RSC files which are getting loaded in 3000, 4000. If I, you know, just visit a couple of pages here and there, try to navigate this website around, you know, just to check out the stuff which is there. If I open this, you have already like landed on 3800, 3900 requests, right? So what it means is that from a pricing point of view, let's say if your average visitor visits like a bunch of websites, has a website like this, of course, this is like an edge case website, but of course we have seen like McMaster, for example, is a website like this and your average visitor is visiting like a bunch of pages and they are, you know, probably like, let's say roughly loading 5,000 requests, right? So 5,000 edge requests is what I mean in an average session of, let's say five minutes or something. What this corresponds to is $2 per million and then you have 5,000 requests, right? So if we compute this number, you're going to see that you have just spent one cent on this session, which is crazy 
which is crazy if you have many many visitors i'm just talking about one visitor who has made 5000 edge requests on a website deployed on Vercel on this plan you have spent one cent on this i mean even if it is like let's say if even it is 10 times less you know than what i have proposed instead of 500 it's 5000 it, instead of 5000 it's 500 then also like still this is a lot if your website receives a lot of traffic from bots from you know crawlers from real people if you are doing seo work and they are discovering your website and it's probably if it's freemium if it's like a website which just includes data then also then it will be a crazy cost just to run this with a you know let's say if you have 10,000 people visiting a month 10,000 people a month at this scale right where the average session consumes 5,000 inch request that's hundred dollars a month just in the request itself right now we are not talking about edge middlewares we are not talking about fast data transfer we are not talking about fast origin transfer and so on so this is one of the things which I feel is a thing which platforms like Versal and other platforms would prefer from a monetization point of view that we make the web as fast as we can and then they also have the incentive that you know the pricing plays in their favor I'm not saying that this is bad or this is anything I'm just showing you the reality of stuff right because the more you use something like this the more you are paying them in terms of request hundred percent it increases the user experience right the users are able to you know quickly instantly load it but it comes with a cost which you should know so this is something similar we also deploy on Fermion as well so if you go to any Fermion powered website for example this and if I for example you know I'm hovering over this you see that we are already loading a login.json so if I click on this you instantly get a page right now if I click on this well this is a sign in with Google thing so this won't obviously be static but if I show you from a user side point of view if I go into this specific course I have this my courses if I hover over this my course is already ready to load of course with a few placeholders to load the back end side of things then if I click on things like this you know the transition happens instantly however the back end call and everything else the data which is getting loaded that can happen like on the front end itself so this is what we do as a company that we create the shell instantly of what needs to be loaded for example if i click on this you can see the shell instantly loads the data and everything comes you know after the page loads now react server components what it does is that it allows you to do something like this without you know so right now you can see that the player and everything loaded after i have clicked on this so if i refresh this what react server components can do is that you can start streaming this data directly from server which includes the benefits like you know the users will get a instant experience sort of you know they'll be able to see immediately without even like waiting for the skeleton loaders but it usually comes at a higher cost where you cannot put this whole infrastructure behind a cdn and all right so if you take a look at our infrastructure you will find that this whole thing is behind a cdn right so we use our own cdn so we have like cache hit almost like for all the pages that's why you're able to load every single page extremely fast on Formio. So, so yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully it was helpful hopefully you learned something new and hopefully you understood a little bit more about how things are working in a broader scheme of things that's all for this one i will see you in the next video really soon